Welcome everybody, we're so glad you joined us today again. We're coming today directly here from our home, um, our Sita Life studio, where there's some um, water and some electricity problems they need to work on and the people there are working really, really hard to get this all sorted out. But we didn't want to miss this opportunity today to uh, spend this time with you and to talk to you today. We're going to have a, um, a powerful time here together today and just want to encourage you and talk to you today. We're going to talk today about the power of the the tongue and um, the things that we can learn from this in our walk with the Lord. Yeah, I'm so excited personally um, about this topic and I've been wanting to do this broadcast for a while already um, because this has had a huge impact on my life. The Lord's really been speaking to me about this um, since the beginning of the year, since January. And it's really changed the entire course and direction of my life by being careful with what comes out of my mouth and what I'm speaking. Um, many people don't realize the impact that it has, but it can literally change the entire course and direction of your life by what you say. Yes. Um, people think it's unimportant, it doesn't matter what you speak, but it does. And we are actually going to give an account for what we say when we stand on Judgment Day um, in heaven. And I want to read you guys that scripture. It's in Matthew 12, verse 33 through 37. Um, Matthew 12, 33 through 37. Um, a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an even heart evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. We see in the Bible again and again where Jesus kind of compares us to um, trees because trees produce fruit and it's either going to be good or bad. And it's the same thing with our lives. As it was saying, um, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. So whatever is in here in your heart, that's what's going to come out and it's either going to be good or bad. And that happens by what you're feeding yourself with. So if you're constantly feeding yourself with negativity, with compl um, complaints, if you're surrounding yourself with that, that's what's going to come out. But if you're surrounding yourself with positive things, with people who are godly, who are going to uplift you and those around, around them, that's what's going to come out of your heart um, as well. And then just that last part. The words we say when we stand on Judgment Day, they're either going to acquit us or condemn us. Um, so we're either going to be freed from that or punished, basically, and that's what the Bible says. So just with that verse alone, we see how important the impacts of our words are. Um, and you know, the Bible even says that our words have the power of life and death. And I want to go straight into another scripture. I'm going to read this from the NIV version because um, it says it a little better. And that's in Proverbs 18, 20 through 21. Um, and it says, from the fruit of their mouths, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So this says it right there. The tongue has the power of life and death, and we're going to eat the fruit of what we speak. Um, and at the top here, it says the harvest of their lips, they're satisfied. So what we... Um, the, the words that we sow, the words that we plant, that's what we're going to harvest. That's what we're going to reap. Um, that's what the Bible says. And I just want to share with you guys uh, really quick two testimonies of how this has had an effect in my life of speaking the life or the death. Um, and for me, it was speaking death in both situations. Um, and I really did reap what I sowed into my life. So what, the first thing is I used to struggle a lot with headaches. Ever since I can remember, since I was um, a little girl, I constantly had headaches. I remember we even went to the doctors um, a few times to check out what I had, but they couldn't find anything. And I just constantly had these headaches. And then in the last few years, I, it got worse and I had them almost daily. I was taking um, loads of ibuprofen, anything I could to just relieve the pain because um, 
it'd be really painful and they would even be migraines, but it was because of the words that were coming out of my mouth. It's because of what I was speaking. I constantly said, oh, I feel like I'm about to get a headache. Or when I go to loud places, I usually get headaches. I would say these things constantly, or I feel like I have a migraine and instantly it would happen or within five minutes time um, because I was reaping what I was sowing. I was saying um, that I get headaches and that's what I got. The second thing that I had was um, all of 2016, I just had this constant weariness, um, tiredness, and just, just constant feeling of exhaustion. Um, I had a hard time focusing. Um, I hardly had any energy um, the whole time, so it was hard for me to get work done, to get school done, and it was just constant. And the reason is, is because I would constantly say, I feel so tired, I feel so tired. Um, I had a long night, no matter if I had a good night's sleep or not, I just said it all the time. And that's what I got. It got to the point where um, my parents were like, this can't go on like this. Um, and so um, when I heard that, I was like, something has to change. Um, because this can't happen. I don't want this in my life. And I had already started reading a lot of scriptures on healing and hearing teachings on it. Um, and I discovered in the Bible that I don't have to deal with sickness or disease. I don't have to deal with headaches. I don't have to deal with tiredness. Um, and you know, the definition of tiredness is weariness, weakness, exhaustion, need of sleep. So by saying that, that's what I got. And so I, one morning I got up and as I was praying, I was like, I am done. Enough is enough. I'm not dealing with this anymore. God already paid the price for me. Um, when Jesus went on the cross, he took all this disease and sickness. And I prayed um, and I said, Lord, I don't want this anymore. And I rebuke it right now. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be strong. And instantly that day, God healed me. I was um, since then, I've been full of energy, um, haven't had any headaches. God's been so um, faithful. And, and from that point on, I had to learn to retrain my mind to not speak those things anymore, to never say I'm feeling tired, to never say I feel like I'm getting a headache. I had to retrain my mind to not say these things anymore and to speak life over my situation instead of death. And the fruit of that has been that I haven't dealt with any of those things since then. So speaking life is very, very important. Yes, it is. Not only, not only over your own life, but mm -hmm. also over the life of others. Our words can have incredible impact even on other people. You know, so many, t so yeah. many times you just say stuff so lightheartedly, so even, oh, I was just choking and stuff, but we don't realize really the impact it can have on the people around us, you know, the, the things that we speak. And we even see this in the Bible. You know, I want to uh, bring your attention to, a, to a, um, a story in the Bible where Moses is uh, on the way to the, to the Promised Land with all the Israelites, and he's sending 12 leaders in the Promised Land to spy out the land, to, and to wait for a report for them, to, to come back to see what the land is all about, if it's really that fruitful and if it's really that awesome. So he sends in 12 leaders to spy out uh, the, the, the promised land and um, 10 of those leaders came back with a negative report. They, all they could see, see is the fear of the, there's giant there. We look like grasshoppers compared to those giants that we see there. And um, this fear spread over the entire Israelites. Yeah. Back then, it was only two people. It was um, Joshua and Caleb, the only two that came back with a positive report, with words of encouragement. All the others spread fear, and the fear grabbed them. And as a result, we can see that the Israelites, for 40 years, were wandering ar ar around in the desert. A whole generation died in the desert, and they never got to see the Promised Land. The only two people yeah. who actually entered into the Promised Land were Joshua and Caleb themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's it's just. In, in, uh, incredible, powerful. I want to ask you today, you know, what is coming out of your mouth? Is it words of encouragement or do you discourage people? Is it words that lift people up or our, do our words tear people down? You know, there's such a, a big difference. You know, we can, if, if you have ever heard um, somebody say, oh, you're grandmother died of, of cancer and your mother has cancer. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. You're going to get cancer too. Mm -hmm. You know, we can actually curse the people around us. And it's so important that we change our mentality in, in thinking and in speaking because you see, it's actually really a heart issue. It's not so much mm -hmm. a tongue issue, but it's 
what's in our heart if our yeah. heart is overflowing with the word of god and the love for christ this will that what what's going to come out of your mouth if, if your life your heart is fe gripped by fear you will speak fear you will speak doubt and especially also for us as moms and as, as wives i want to encourage you today just to be a cheerleader to encourage the people around you not to tear them down to speak life into your kids and in your husband and not uh words words of, of death mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, um, for both of us, what we've had to do is we've asked the Lord to help us in this. Yeah. Um, because if you've been trained for so long to speak negativity or death like what I did, I had to ask the Lord to help me because many times I didn't even realize that I was saying those things. So I want to read you guys a scripture. It's in uh, Psalms 141, verse 3. It says, Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. Um, and I made this like my prayer. I said, Lord, take control of what I say. Guard my lips. I asked him, um, convict me um, when I say things that come out of my mouth that aren't godly, that are speaking death. And um, for about a whole month, it was like I was getting convicted like five times a day. It was like the Lord was showing me, you shouldn't be saying that kind of things. You shouldn't be saying that. Things that are so normal to say in society, um, but just things that are speaking death. So I really had to retrain my mind and have the Lord guard my lips. And he did. And he spoke to me every time something came out. And um, I repented and tr made sure that I didn't say that again. Um, for the future. And you know, I even love this part here where it says, take control of what I say. And I've even had this where I'll be talking to my friends or my sisters, we'll be talking about something in the Bible um, or something, and they'll ask me a question and I have an answer in my mind that I'm about to answer them. But it's like, as soon as I open my mouth, the Holy Spirit speaks through me and something completely different comes out. And it's so amazing because I'm shocked at the own thing that comes out of my mouth. But it's like what it says here. He'll take control of what you say. He'll overflow out of you at times and, um, and give this awesome revelation of something in his word. And that's what God wants from us. He wants our lips to be guarded. He wants us to speak life and for him to really take control of what we say. So I just want to pray um, today for all of us, for the Lord to really do this. Um, so dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day that you've given us today, for this time we've had to spend together. Lord, I ask you right now that you will take control um, of our lips, take control of what we say, guard our hearts, um, help us to focus on godly things, things that are, that are of you, um, that our mind and our hearts are filled with things that are pure and holy so that we don't allow the things of this world to come out of our hearts but only things that are from you and that you will really help us to examine our heart and check it and get it right with you lord and that you will really put a guard over all of our mouths and help us in everything that we say that we can make a commitment to only speak life and never to speak death over any and every situation in our lives i just thank you and praise you in jesus name i pray amen 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 we're so excited that you guys joined us today um you guys can share this broadcast if you guys ever have any testimonies things that the lord has spoken um to you through these broadcasts share it with us if you go on our homepage on our website um, CTALife.org. If you scroll down, there's a testimony section. Fill it out. We love hearing from you guys and um, seeing what the Lord is doing in your lives. Also, your prayer requests, feel free to send them to us. We have an incredible intercessory team um, here and, and also in Ethiopia. We would love mm -hmm. to pray with you and to hear from you. We love you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, live today victoriously. Um, we want to encourage you to go out and to talk to somebody about the Lord today. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.